The future I dream for my country is a future where we are not caught by surprise from things which you know might happen. Rwanda, the land of a thousand hills, is a small, densely populated mountainous country at the heart of Africa. With a stable government and extensive development policies, the country is thriving. However, like many countries in Africa, it faces potentially large risks from climate change. What's different in Rwanda is that the country is already developing and investing in progressive climate policies. Rwanda is one of the few countries in Africa that have a clear strategy that define a vision, long-term vision, of the kind of economy the country is aspiring to and how it's planning to uh, tackle the impacts of climate change going forward. For Rwanda, agriculture is a vital industry that employs 80% of the country's population and generates a third of its GDP as well as a large percentage of its foreign income. The agriculture sector is an important source of exports, dominated by tea and coffee. Tea is one of the major exports um, uh, for the country. Uh, it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably the second or third largest um, forex earner for the country. Um, and Rwanda also produces some of the highest quality teas in the world. Um, so it's uh, both a major income earner, but it also raises the profile of the country as a producer of very high quality teas. And also, uh, tea is a labor-intensive industry. So we're employing a lot of people. So, uh, for example, in Rwanda and Kitabi factory here, we're employing about 3,000 workers. And that one is a very good employment for, for, for the people in Rwanda. The tea and coffee sectors have been earmarked as critical growth areas. And the country has plans to expand the quantity and quality of production, increasing exports and enhancing the rural economy. However, tea and coffee are very sensitive to the climate and the sector faces risks from future climate change. Because of this, the Rwandan government has been working with experts to help understand these risks and develop ways to address them, so-called adaptation. And they have already begun integrating adaptation responses into their plans for the tea and coffee sector. This programme is looking at mainstreaming climate change into the tea and coffee sector in Rwanda. And what's really interesting about the project is we look at the whole sequence from early design through to implementation and climate finance. When we talk about mainstreaming, we're really referring to a move from the way that we used to do things, which was funding standalone climate projects, to actually integrating those climate change projects into development itself, into agricultural policy, into sector planning. And by doing that, we have lots of advantages in terms of integrating uh, climate change with other factors. Understanding the current impacts of the climate on Rwanda's tea and coffee is key. Located a few degrees south of the equator, Rwanda has a temperate climate with two rainy seasons. However, there are large variations in the rainfall between years, and the weather has become increasingly unpredictable due to the growing influence of climate change. In the last 40 years, uh, the temperature has increased by 1.2 degrees Celsius, while the, the global warming temperature increase for 150 years is around 1 degree Celsius, meaning that the temperature of Rwanda is increasing higher than the global warming. Tea production in Rwanda involves both large and small-scale farmers. All have already felt the impact of a changing climate in recent years. Because the weather has been extremely variable um, in the past, uh, in the past uh, couple of years, what we've noticed is um, in certain years we have really good crop, good yields. Other years the crop drops uh, and you don't get as much, um, uh, you know, as much tea being made uh, in the country. Um, so it's very erratic and that's affecting the long-term planning, uh, both of the farmer and the factories as well. Similar impacts are occurring in the coffee sector, not only as a result of changes in the climate, but also from the effects of climate on coffee pests and disease. When you have uh, increasing temperatures, it's obvious you also have increase in uh, incidence and severity of the, some diseases like uh, 
a few first, like um, insect paste, such as a test bag. You will find more attacks on uh, warmer legions than in the cooler legions. There's a proof behind that. As the climate continues to change, these impacts could get much worse. Climate change is going to lead to future risks for the tea and coffee sector in Rwanda. And one of the things we're most concerned about are the changes in temperature. And that's especially important given the plans to expand the area of tea and coffee production. Now, if those sites where they want to do extension, you know, for the, the, the area covered by coffee and tea, are sorted, fixed, and they start investing. And then with the climate variability and climate change impacts, temperature increases. Then we'll be in trouble because we cannot move that part of the country to another level. While this presents a potentially worrying future, there are actions that can be taken to address these climate risks. So as far as climate change goes, it's very important for Rwanda to consider what the projections mean for their country and make sure that they can understand and work with the information at hand so that they can prepare um, for any changes that may occur in the future. High levels of uncertainty is not a, is not a reason for, for inaction. The project has developed to address the challenges of adaptation, including uncertainty, and we've developed three building blocks to help do that. First, we advance low regret adaptation with a focus on addressing current climate variability, trying to encourage options that are good for the climate today, but also help build resilience for the future. And a good example of that is the coffee shade trees that we're proposing. Shade has got a lot of advantages in coffee. One of them is uh, it, it modifies uh, the environment, which would allow coffee uh, to be able to be grown under conditions where there is changes in, in the weather conditions, particularly in temperatures. The other, the other aspect uh, we, are, we are looking into, apart from shade trees, uh, is the use of uh, uh, intercropping tall uh, uh, bananas in coffee. And bananas also would like to provide a better environment for coffee than when you are growing it uh, as a sole crop. You can harvest the uh, banana remainings and put them on the, on the soil, which adds the organic matter in the soil. Uh, and the other is, of course, it's, uh, it's also a, a source of cash uh, income, and it's a food crop, food security. So you, you kill two birds with one stone. These early initiatives are relatively simple and provide quick wins. But there are also longer-term problems that need solutions. Secondly, we are looking at near-term decisions that have a long lifetime and will be exposed to climate change in the future. And a good example there is the expansion of the tea areas and the need to expand those into areas which will be suitable for production in the future under climate change as well as today. And that's a particular problem for tea because tea is a long-lived crop with a very long payback period of around 15 years. And the plantations, when they're produced, will be here for decades. Rwanda is in uh, a unique position in, in that there's a, a large range of different altitudes and temperatures decrease um, as you go higher up. Uh, one thing we know climate change will deliver is increasing temperatures, which means that we need to think about growing tea at higher altitudes. We need to plan for that longer term, you know, 20 years forward. Uh, and that's where making sure that we've got the right altitudes being used and the right uh, mix in terms of a portfolio of different approaches to tea is going to be so, so important. Um, so this is very, very much uh, a sort of a long-term policy-making approach. So it's good to start thinking now strategically in piloting it in a smaller way and seeing how can we help the government make the right decision so that the investment made today are resilient within the changing climate. And the final area is to take account of the large future risks that might be emerging uh, and to start with monitoring research and information so that we can learn and actually prepare and improve our future decision making. 
But implementing these adaptation actions has a cost. As part of international negotiations, climate finance is now flowing to countries such as Rwanda. Rwanda is also the first African country to set up its own national climate fund, FONERWA, which supports climate and environmental projects in line with national green growth and climate resilient development objectives. So FONERWA uh, came as a part of a strategy that supports uh, cross-sector integration of environment and climate change. And in that regard, it serves as a sustainable financing mechanism. Fonerwa mobilizes resources, um, channels those resources to applicants who are successful through the application process. Fonerwa is financing the tea and coffee project, funding the introduction of coffee shade trees, advancing climate knowledge for tea expansion, and enhancing monitoring and information. Rwanda's climate is already changing, but fortunately, so are its policies. The country is starting to take future climate change into account today, and as this case study on tea and coffee shows, is putting strategies in place to manage the risks and create opportunities. I'm reassured by the foresight in our decision makers and all the key stakeholders in trying to preempt uh, the catastrophic impacts that may come. My hope is that we do as much as we can and show others that you know you can have you can change the future by acting right today. And that's what we are trying to do. <laughs>